sorry for the newcomers. This, this is a bonus for talks this time. We try and do kind of like one, you know, stuff, simple talk. One, but Jax is really cool. And, and, uh, I kind of did the simple part last time, so it sort of worked out. Zach, have you ever done anything with the image X stuff? The, the guys up there have that deal where you can uh, concatenate profiles, where you, you have like a base profile. And then the, the main file and the next profile adds like this layer and that layer, kind of like features done. Huh. Uh, I haven't actually seen that, but it makes sense because yeah. the demo that I gave was like the local, yeah. the local main file, and then that points to the other like bigger one. So you can have like a local one that would point to like the yeah. local one. So yeah, you can get really fancy with it. <laughs> yeah, they, they did a bunch of patches. I heard them talking, it was DCLA, huh. maybe a year or two ago. But yeah, it's, I don't know, it, then it gets so complicated, you gotta really keep track of it. Yeah, that's why you gotta use version control. Like yeah, control like that. That. So yeah. It gets out of hand. Okay, we'll get started. Uh, last time we learned uh, something about why you should use panels. Uh, we're gonna learn a little bit more this time. I'm Doug from uh, Safe Tree, and Rich is the Capo de Capo of Safe Tree, and a brilliant guy, so it's fun to work there because you learn a lot. Um, there really is no such thing as panels. Everybody talks about panels. Panels is really a whole ecosystem. It, it, you, you gotta have C tools, you really gotta have views. There's a whole bunch of different parts to panels. So it isn't just one thing, and it kind of depends on all of the different parts you wanna bring in. Um, and panels is fundamentally not a layout tool. Uh, people think of it as a way to put things on a page and rearrange them. That it can do, but it's not how we use it most of the time nowadays. We just use it to assemble all of the stuff we're gonna need. We dump it in one bin and then we use like bootstrap to make it look pretty. That separates the theming layer from the business logic layer and makes it really easy for you to switch themes and makes it a lot easier for the themers like Chuck to, to deal with it and it really works well. Um, so today we're going to talk about a couple of best practices. We're going to try and figure out what the hell context and relationships are. Um, we're going to, and then just take a quick look at Panelizer and Minipanel to understand these are kind of some sub modules that add on to the system. So here's the classic, I just told you it's not fundamentally a layout tool, but we often use it for a layout tool because it works really well on the back end. So you've got a node edit form, and it's complicated content type, and the edit form is about this long. And you've all seen that, you know, where you just scroll and scroll and scroll. There's 1,600 taxonomies and all that. People got carried away, a bunch of node relationships. Um, so we're gonna try and improve <coughs> on the endless column. So this is the typical kind of thing, you know, you put all your regular fields over here, and in this uh, particular, uh, instance, we put all of our taxonomies on one side. So that when we got done, we had all our regular fields here, and then we had this nice long list of all of these taxonomies that the client wanted. But it was really easy for them to find them. It was really easy for them to say, okay, is this product in all of the right categories or not? You know, because they could just scan right down. So that's really handy, and it's right out of the box, and it's one of the page manager defaults. All you do is turn it on. So that's a really good way to use panels in the back end. On the front end, um, often you have these scenarios where you have a, a complex product type, you want to display various taxonomies, you've got lots of things going on, and so um, this is an ideal thing for panels, not so much for layout again, but it's got how to assemble all this stuff, so that's what we're going to do. So the, First thing you do with panels is you don't pay any attention to panels and you go work with views. Because views is really the key. You know, panels isn't gonna be any good without the views. And what's cool about using um, panels is you can have complex contextual filters because panels is gonna supply the arguments for that contextual filter. And what's cool about that is it can simplify your views a lot. Because you can have like all, an almost universal view and then you're just gonna feed it this taxonomy or that taxonomy or this or that, you know, and panel's gonna take care of that and you just need one view display. 
So be sure your view displays are panes, not blocks. <coughs> you have to mess with blocks all of the time. Blocks are dumb, panes are smart. I've highlighted two things over here. One's the contextual filter, which we're going to take a look at. And the other is a pet peeve of mine, the machine name. Please name your panes, because they come out of the box. When you create a new pane, it's pane one, and then it's pane two, and pane three. And then when you go to repair that site, it's a freaking pain all the time, because it's just one, two, three, and you gotta go, and it's like, like you know, oh, I could have called it the product family pain, and then I kind of like go, well, it's not supposed to be there. Okay. <laughs> Textual filters, right, are just filters that are variables. You're going to throw some variable in there and say, I want to filter on whatever I happen to throw at you. And that's going to change my long list of possible things I'm going to show on that page that might be related to just the things that are related to that particular product or node or whatever. Um, the secret to it is to always use your panel pane, uh, well this is actually, the, we're still in views, so, the, so this one you can see is pretty complicated. It's, it's got depth of taxonomy, so it's gonna do all this other stuff. It's gonna allow multiple values, then they're gonna be concatenated in a particular style. So it would be really hard to deal with a view like that unless you had panels or something or code to feed it the right kind of argument, because you're just not going to get that out of the box. You know, it's not going to be argument one, right? So, set the argument to input on pane config. That's the nicest way. So, you know, here in the, this area, which is our pane settings, we've got this thing, and what we're going to do is we're going to tell it, I'm going to tell you when I set up my panels, this is what the argument I want to use. So I'm not going to, you know, again, my, my view is dumb. It doesn't care. It just says, feed me a list of taxonomies. And I'm going to say, yeah, when I set up the pane, each individual pane, I might reuse that same view, but that's where I'm going to feed you that list of taxonomies. I'm going to call it something again, so I'll recognize it when I see it. And um, I, I'm going to violate my rule right away because I'm lazy. And I'm going to just use this as a panel argument because this is a self-exclude myself. So I'm, you know, I'm a product. I tag with the same taxonomy that I want those other things to be tagged with. So I don't want to show up in my own list. So I'm going to use a self-exclude. And I always know since this is an out of the box again, um, page manager page that node, you know percentage node ID, it's going to always give me my node ID as the first argument. If you don't understand all that, you will someday. <laughs> um, context and relationships. Who can give a, a quick definition of what panel's context and relationships are? Don't all say it once. Um, the truth of the matter is, if you look all over the internet and you Google it, nobody knows what the <laughs> context and relationships are. Now technically, con uh, context, as Earl Miles said, when he, you know, he's the guy who wrote this originally, he doesn't make it anymore, but he wrote it originally, he said, context is a wrapper around primary Drupal objects. Now that doesn't mean a lot to you, but what it means is it's just about any freaking thing you can find on your site. So it's really, really powerful. That's a hint. Really, context is any object already in scope. Now, to programmers, scope means it's available. It's there. You can use it. It's not theoretical. It's not like off in the, off in the you know, storage cabinet or something. It's right there. It's ready to go. So you can use it. And what context is, is anything that's ready to go. Unfortunately, context also is a, man, is a method for bringing in more things that are ready to go. Relationships are just another way of creating context. That's the whole deal. It's all context. This is the only thing that really matters. Is it there for me to use? And relationships, this context methodology, we'll show examples of them. There's just other ways 
of making more contacts. So this little spot down here, on, and this has been cut off, this thing goes on and on and on and on on this particular example, is really the key. These are just tools up here, but the key to this whole thing operating is all of this stuff that's available to me to use in my uh, panel setup. So the most interesting part is the part at the bottom. So let's look at relationships. <coughs> because this is a node view um, form out of the box, uh, I already have a bazillion contexts associated with it. And I also, because it's a complex um, content type, I have a bazillion relationships already available. And these relationships are no different than the ones you use in views. You know how in views you go over to that weird section that says advanced and you open it up and you go, oh my God, what the hell is this? And then you look at it and there's relationships and arguments now called contextual filters or whatever they are. Um, but those relationships are basically anything that that product can potentially use. So for instance, let's say you have a product and then you have another content type called uh, specifications and there might be certain specification sheets associated with that product, and you've got a node uh, relationship, you know, an entity um, relationship type field or something that's connecting that product to those specification sheets. So those specification sheets are potentially in scope, but are not in scope until in the view or the panel, you say, bring me those thingies because then you'll be able to see the whole object. You'll be able to see all its fields, anything associated with it. But all you know at first is it's like NID, that's all you've got. And until you add that relationship, it's, then it's gonna come load that thing in to scope. And now if all bits are off, you got the whole nine yard. The particular one we're gonna use is multiple terms from nodes. It's an interesting one, because what it allows you to do is say, I'm going to use this taxonomy vocab and this taxonomy vocab, and I'm going to mishel into one thing, which is kind of cool, because your client goes, well, you know, sometimes I want it on the industry, and sometimes I want it on this, and in this particular case, I want either one to show up and blah, 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 and this allows you to do that. You can pick them all if you wanted to. I don't think it worked too well, but you can combine these things of all the different vocabularies you have available. And then it asks you these kind of cryptic things up here, identifier, identifier. Well, what are they? They're context identifiers, because what you're doing is creating a context. And in fact, we're gonna see that soon because here's our summary of context. This is just a little piece of that long list at the bottom of that, that uh, context page. And there's our new context. And in fact, what we're gonna do finally is go to panels and start playing around with panels. And we're going to either insert that particular view, or in this case, edit it, and the area we want is the settings. And then we're gonna look at this relationship. We're gonna say, okay, remember that view? It says, I wanna see this. And you've created this. And this is created from here, and this matches this, which then matches that. The whole thing actually works. And this particular gizmoid here, it means I want, and you have to kind of learn this technology, but it tells you actually here what each of these things mean. And it means I want all of the TIDs, the taxonomy term IDs, um, that are associated with this whole gamish I've created in my relationship. And then it works. And it looks pretty, and clients pay you money. And last I checked, that's kind of handy. Okay, context and relationships, now context. Well, contexts are kind of weird because you can actually do anything with context, which can be a dangerous thing. You can bring in anything that's on your Drupal site and apply it to that panel or that page manager page. And you get in a lot of trouble and you see really weird things people do. 
But it, a lot of times you just want to bring in arguments. You, you know, you've got a path, right? You've got a path to that page, and you've created a page manager variant that's looking for that path. And what it's going to do is it knows, in this particular case, it's going to have a location name variable. It's going to have a page name variable. It's going to have a look, uh, service name variable. So this is all laid out, and if you were here last time, you remember Judy's three rules, don't you? Yes. <laughs> they should be unique, they should be hackable, your, your paths are very important. These are unique, and they're hackable, and they actually don't bring in um, the, the nasty things they're not supposed to. So, what you do is, you pull down this list, because this is not a node edit page or a node view page or anything. It's kind of like one off and, and, and panelist goes, well, I don't know what you're going to do. So I'm going to give you the keys to the ball, folks. You can do anything. And you get this little list, but you realize you could do just about anything with this little list because you have strange things like string, which means you could just create some code, and bring in all kinds of stuff. But in this case, we're just going to bring in an argument. We stick up here the name of the, of the thing we're going to put, and we give it an identifier so we can actually know what it is. The string is probably not going to be too informative the next time we use it. Uh, the keyword is exactly the same thing. We get this when we're done, argument one and argument two. And it turns out that the argument one, believe it or not, would count you know, zero, one. Uh, is location name, and sure enough it is. And argument two, because this is panels and not actually arguments, <laughs> it just says this is argument two because it ignores this and says that's the second thing I see. Um, so back again to this context relationships, then we can use this stuff. So now we can insert it in here and insert it in here, and it can do all kinds of stuff. So it can basically see that path now, our whole page can see the path, and it can do all kinds of wonderful things with those variables that are hidden in that path. And does anybody know why this has, this particular pane has a dark border around it? It's the title. If you select up here in panels, that you want a particular pane to be the title of the node, and that's what we're doing. We're adding a location name to the title. So now it's my wonderful company located in Oshkosh. So that's my particular branch. So those are kind of things you can do with context. And the other part of it is this context and relationships are just new ways of making context. And really what you do is you just look through the list that you've got available of the context, and you say uh, 99 times out of 100, it's got everything you need, it's already in scope, you know, you just rock and roll, but sometimes it's missing, and then you gotta go use those arcane methodologies to bring it in. Panelizer, there's two ways to use Panelizer. You can panelize view modes, very good. You can panelize individual nodes, problematic. We'll see why. Um, there's a talk in Palantir. Um, you can check these slides out on our site because Marie will have them up shortly. I'm sure she's really she pounds on me till I get them up. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but uh, they kind of wander around. But the, the discussion at the end of this, the comments are really good and apropos. So let's take a look at this. So panelizer basically allows you to panelize the default view mode of your content. So when you show your node, it's going to take over and show it. But if you showed it in the teaser, it goes, what? I never heard of such a thing. Well, Panelizer allows you to analyze the teaser. And then you get the exact same thing you get right in panels. In fact, when you go there, you'll see instead of it being vertically laid out, because it's vertically laid out in normal panels because you have variants, but in regular stuff, this is basically a variant right here is the teaser, so it lays it out sideways, and you can do your content, you can do your context, you can do your settings, you can do anything you can do in panels, and now it's gonna affect the teaser mode 
or the, you know, if you use entity view modes, you can create 110 view modes and have it show up. And Panelize, Panelizer will allow you to control the, um, whatever shows up on that particular uh, view mode. <coughs> the key is permissions. And you can see here, we basically said, I get all the permissions and everybody gets squat. So that means I get to control view modes and nobody else gets to do that, anything else. And that keeps it in my domain, it means it's exportable, it means it's controllable, it means it's version controllable, all of the good things. Um, once I start turning this on, then I go into mode two, which is per node. Per node is cool sometimes. Panoply uses a lot of the kind of per node approach. Um, it allows your client to do all kinds of things. And depending on which of these, and you can see they're pretty granular, depending on this that you turned on or off. Are these separate from Drupal permissions? Or yeah, these? well, no, this is this is just part of the Drupal permissions tree. So you have web admin who's user one and you're assigning permissions. Well, is that someone like anyone other than user one? Yeah, yeah. Well, this, this permissions is, don't apply to user one. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of a pseudo user okay. one. Yeah, we, yeah. We've been we've been yeah. Yeah. creating a, a, like role, you, a role as if you were user yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we, we don't want to user one is us. Okay. This is like pseudo user one, it, and we get most sense. stuff. Okay. Eh, they don't quite it, get everything. It, it lets us control <laughs> the actual user one account, but still tell people if they want it, they get a, a user right. that can yeah. do it. Because they all go, oh, I know Drupal. So they, they I want to use like user one. Yeah. 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 And then they go. But, but, it does, but it does give them everything, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, pretty much. You know, you can easily hide something in there. There actually are some things that only user one can do. Uh, right. Import views is one. Yeah. Uh, you can't import views no matter how many. There's, there's no permission for it. You're either user one and you can do it, or you can't. That's it. The other reason the name actually had used, I started sticking that in there, because we were using like web admin and Drupal admin, and just that name didn't imply whether it was all powerful or not, so we just started adding it to the name. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little more convenient now. Right? <laughs> um, Pernode is cool in that you can set a default template, so you can basically set up the whole layout and content and page title and everything you want. Um, but if you give them permissions to change it, the minute they change it, it's, it's disconnected from that default. And now if you go in and they say, oh, I want all those basic pages to have this extra view, it'll go on to every uh, page that hasn't been messed with, but anything that they've changed, um, they won't get it because they've been disconnected from that default. Now they can go ahead and revert their variant back to the default, but then they'll lose their individual changes. So it gets kind of, unless the you're working with the client, the client knows what they're doing, it can be a little problematic. And if you're using um, Workbench, um, you want to check out this link because panels, uh, panelizer variants, even though I don't think they're really called variants, are attached to the node and not the revision. And um, Workbench works with revision, and there's a way to get that all to work happy together. Last time I checked, you still had to apply the uh, patches to it. Uh, many panels is just panels as blocks. That's really it. If for some strange and exotic reason you want a block to be analyzed, turn on many panels. Um, people traditionally use it for like footer blocks and stuff. Uh, we basically never use it, but um, it's out there. And there's a whole bunch of good videos on uh, how to mess with it and set it up. So that's pretty much the world of panels. Uh, remember, Panels is powerful. Panels is complex. With with great power comes great responsibility, or something like that. Whatever that is. <laughs> um, so start simple, work your way up. You can kind of um, work your way up and, and find your happy zone in panels. But it it's really cool. It's the only one-stop place for really coding your business logic. Business logic is what's going to show on the page, 
because it's almost never that you just displaying a node, you know? It's always, oh, we want the list of whatever along with that node, or we want the events associated with it, or the blog posts associated with it, or whatever. So you then you've got to bring that in. Panels is really the way to do it. And that's it. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's always an engaging presentation. <laughs> All right, so next up we got